Right, today I'm going to be making some matcha paneer. So just to start off, if I've got one pan here and I've put in a dried red chilli, which I've just halved, this is just going to um, sit in the oil for a little while until it goes kind of um, black or darker in colour, almost black, and it will release all the chilli oil into the, um, all the chilli into the oil, sorry. Then another pan I've started to kind of shallow fry my paneer until that goes golden brown. Once the paneer is done, I'm going to add it into some water. Okay, so I've just gone in with the onion, which I have cut quite chunky, so this is going to get blended up once it goes golden brown. So the paneer has gone a lovely golden brown, and I've just put it into a bowl with hot water so it can soften up. So when we cook the paneer, it's not going to be kind of like hard and chewy, so it should have a nice soft texture when it goes into the masala. Okay, so the onions are going a lovely golden brown, so now I'm going to add in some um, just like chunky chopped garlic and ginger. I've got Indian ginger here. I'm just going to add that in just to give it a bit of time to soften up before I blend up this mixture. I guess I've got here two vine ripened tomatoes which I've just chopped up. I'm going to blend this up so it becomes kind of like a gravy and then that will go into the masala mixture as well after. Okay, so in here I've got the fried onions, the ginger and the garlic. And I'm going to blend this up along with some roasted cashews because this will make the masala really nice and thick. And just to give it a little helping hand while it's blending, I'm going to add in a couple of teaspoons of the tomato mixture I just blended up as well. About three. So here is the blended up onion, ginger and garlic mixture which I've added some cashew nuts to it and I've also added the tomato mixture and just to help with the blending so I'm just letting that come to a little sizzle again and um, so that's been sizzling away for a couple of minutes now so I'm just going to add in the blended tomato and I'm just going to mix that all in that cook for about a couple of minutes before I add in the spices. Oh, the masala is kind of mixed. Okay, so while the masala is kind of just doing its thing, I've got some peas here, some garden peas, which I've just soaked in boiling hot water, just for them to kind of just tenderize a little bit before I add it to the masala. So now I'm going to go in with all my masala. I'm going to go in with a teaspoon of red chilli powder. Two heat teaspoons of tanajiru. This is a coriander cumin mixture that has already been kind of measured out. Um, the ratio is more coriander to cumin. So to every tablespoon of coriander, it's about a teaspoon of cumin. So I'm going to put a good two heat teaspoons of that, maybe a touch more. And about half a teaspoon of turmeric. So I'm going to add a teaspoon of salt. And I will taste it afterwards and see if it needs any more. I'm just going to stir this all together. And what I want is I want the oils to start seeping through the masala mixture. So I'm going to put the lid on. And I'm going to just let this cook for maybe two to three minutes. Check on it and make sure that the oil is coming through. It's popping through. Okay, so it's been like about two, three minutes. And you can see like the oil is kind of like bubbling through the masala. Lovely. And blending down all the mixture is going to make sure that the masala sauce is nice and smooth and hasn't got like chunky bits in it. Kind of like how you, what you get in like a restaurant. Okay, so the peas are in. And I'm just going to mix that in nicely. It's coated in that lovely masala. Let that again just cook for two three minutes and I'm going to start to add some water in there to form our gravy. Okay so the peas have been cooking for a few minutes. I'm just going to add in now some water. I'm not really going by any measurement but I'm probably looking at about three quarters of a cup for now. So I still want that masala to be nice and thick. 
I don't want it to be like too watered down. So that's how it's looking at the moment. It is nice and thick. It's not um, it's not a very runny sauce. So about three quarters of a cup of water was just enough. But I'm just going to cover this and let this bubble away for a little while. Maybe about five minutes or so and then add the paneer. I will also be tasting the masala and then we'll add anything that it's lacking. Okay, so this is how, <laughs> okay, so this is how the masala is looking now. And I've tasted it. It tastes absolutely wonderful. I did add about another quarter teaspoon of salt. So all in total, I've added one and a quarter teaspoon. So now time to go in with the paneer. You see the paneer has been soaking in some water, which is just here. I'm just going to grab a slotted spoon and start adding in the paneer. Okay, so that's all the paneer added in. I'm just going to gently just mix that into the gravy. At this point, I don't think I need more gravy. I think there is enough here. Because like I said, I don't want to add any more water and it becomes really watery. So I'm going to let that cook again for just a few minutes because the paneer is already cooked anyway. It just needs to warm through the sauce and absorb some of the lovely flavours. And then we're going to finish the dish off with some garam masala, some kasuri methi, some dried fenugreek leaves and of course coriander. Time to add garam masala. So I've got just over half a teaspoon of garam masala here. And there's our dried kasuri methi, the dried fenugreek leaves. This is half a tablespoon and I just grinded it in the palm of my hands um, before adding it in. So I'm just going to stir that through. So there we have it. Mata paneer. All nicely made and a lovely thick masala with fresh tomatoes and fresh ingredients and nice mixture of spices not too many but just enough to bring out all the flavors and with any curry you're going to add coriander so i'm going to go in with a lovely heaped handful of coriander i do like coriander and the flavor that it brings to dishes i'm also going to go in with some cream um we only have oatly whipping cream here you don't taste the oats um you don't have to add this, it is optional, but it does add a lovely richness to the dish. So there we go. Mata paneer. All done.